Hey, uh, Peter, welcome to the show, my friend. And, man, a busy weekend. Memphis Grizzlies uh, played the San Antonio Spurs uh, four-game uh uh, beat down. Well, I want to say beat down. Sweep the sweep of the Grizzlies. And uh, hey, they did you see any signs of the Grizzlies improving any in the playoff series? Uh, I wouldn't call it improvement. I think it definitely uh, put a big old spotlight on the flaws that we had. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we hey man, we we played well against the Clippers. And we did. We took care of business against the Thunder. But now we're talking about that next step up. And let's be honest, the Spurs have been that next step up for a long time. So I, I think it definitely showed the things that we need to improve on, not only with our roster, but maybe individually with certain players. But, you know, uh, tip of the hat to the Spurs, man. I mean, they just they, they found a way to uh, double down on Mark and on Zach, and they took care of business. Yeah, most definitely, you know, and, you can, you can tell that the Spurs were the better team in this series, but kind of looking back on this whole run, Peter, what are your thoughts, you know, just winning 56 games and then, you know, you beat the Clippers and beat the Thunder, go to the Western Conference Finals for the first time, so many memorable things along that that whole run. What, what are your thoughts on this season uh, and being a Grizzly fan? I mean, it's amazing. I mean, it, you know, it had all the highlights, all the highs and lows you can ask for. Uh, in the season, I mean, we, we started off. We were one of the best teams in the league. Uh, then, then, you know, about mid, you know, about what about late December, we kind of had a little skid there. Then we had the big Rudy trade. We had we traded Maurice and uh, Wayne Ellington uh, pretty much for for you know John Lore. So there's there's that, those ups and downs we had. But then when it came down near the end of the season, you know, we, we tightened the screws. We played the Clippers really well. We played the Thunder really well. And, you know, that, what else can you ask for? I, you know, I, I got called out for saying we kind of overachieved. And, I, I, you know, and I, I don't mean that in, in a derogatory sense to the team. But let's be honest, we made all those trades, you know, major media outlets thought we were throwing in the towel in the season. And this team right. didn't. Mm-hmm. This team buckled down. They took care of business. And I think, if anything, we show that we're true contenders and we have the, the foundation and the building blocks to keep this, you know, withstanding. Hey, I'm glad you can't mention that. I was talking about this with our good friend Jonathan C. Smith last night about have we is it with the roster we have now is this as good as it's going to get? I want to. I'm asking everybody this: Have we reached a glass ceiling with this talent? Like, is this the highest we will get as the Western Conference Finals? Yeah. First of all, you're best friend, Jonathan C. Smith. <laughs> Jonathan C. Smith is nobody's best friend. I want to get that straight right now. Uh, you know, just get it, Jonathan. Shout out to Jonathan. This is my guy. Yeah, he's all right. He's you know, Jonathan. We, shout, shout, out out to Jonathan. shout out to Jonathan C. Smith. Jonathan C. Smith. He, he wants you to make sure you get that C in there for some reason. That's true. Anyway. All right, uh, Peter, uh, go ahead and answer the question. Yeah. Sir. Well, I think, I think what I think what happened with this one was Tayshaun this just was a horrible matchup for Tayshawn, and I think that was a deficiency that we had at small forward. And we talked about it on this show last week about possibly giving Quincy a chance. And maybe it was a little too late in the game to make that happen, but I just yeah. see that going into next season is a you know almost a necessity at this point because we do have to have outside shooters. But yeah, there are there are you know there's there's going to be movement on the roster. There's no doubt about it. I mean, we definitely got to make. Uh, you know, uh, we got to go out and spend that money on, on TA to keep, you know, to retain his services. I think that's pro- probably priority number one. And then we have guys, uh, you know, that we got to make decisions on that we have team options on, like John Lohr and Austin Day. And then, you know, as, from what it sounds like, Jared Bales is going to use his player option. So, yeah, I mean, there, there's huge opportunities for us uh, to go out there on the market. And, I, you know, I was going through all the free agents that are available, and there are some shooters. Now, there's not, there's not a, a, a depth of talent uh, as far as outside shooting that, that's available in this free agent class. Yeah. But, there are, but there are some guys that I think uh, for the money they made this season and probably what they'll be asking and what the market will give them, mm-hmm. uh, I think there are some guys that we could uh, definitely consider uh, for Nixer's roster. Mm-hmm. All right, and uh, hey, Peter, you said that Tony's the pr- uh, priority number one. Do you think he's a bigger priority or he signed than Lionel? Oh no, no, I was, I was purely talking about uh, player roster wise. Uh, okay, okay, right. Peter, what were your thoughts on hearing uh, Karen Coach talk there? Well, say the last part again. Uh, hearing uh, Coach and what he had to say. 
Well, I think I think the part that bothered him the most is we couldn't contain Tony Parker. I think that yep. bothered him to no yeah, end. I mean, aggravate anybody, man. <laughs> yeah, that's that's his mo. And you know, we talked about that being a huge X factor for this series. Is you know, we were so impressed with Michael in those first uh, two series, and we were really hoping that he'd take that next step up. Yeah. And I think we all got to see firsthand the difference between a second tier point guard and a first tier point guard. I mean, you know, Conley, you know, just could not for whatever reason and get on track in the series at all. And, of course, credit goes to uh, the Spurs and, and their smothering defense, but uh, Tony Parker was just unbelievable, guys. I mean, that, you know, you, <laughs> you, you, know yeah. you can't say nothing else. I mean, I, I think <laughs> I think that's what bothers him the most. I think there's a respect factor there, too. There's also that, that uh, competitive spirit that's in Atlanta Hall that, that you know, does not like uh, to wave the white flag to anybody. He wants to get out there. And, and fight and battle through. And I, I think that so many times we would dip under that pick and roll, and I did. It just drove him absolutely nuts. Mm-hmm. You know, it, whether it was Bayless, Conley, whoever was trying to guard him, everybody kept dipping under. And what did Tony do? Takes that one dribble to the right or the left and shoots the jumper. And it's just, we could not defend it. And it was yeah. embarrassing. And I think that's probably what upset him the most. Hey, guy, we're going to take a break right here. And when we come back, uh, we're going to have a uh, some audio on Zach Randolph from uh, last night. And uh, it was a, a sports. It was sportsmanlike on the on that on the half of the half of Lionel Hollins to congratulate the uh, San Antonio Spurs and talk about how well they did, of course, and things like that last uh, night. So that was very good. Also, we have some audio from uh, Tony Allen coming up after the break. So yes, we want to take care of that too. Coming up after the break. Hey, it's been a good evening, and we're gonna come back. Don't go anywhere. We got this good audio coming up. Zach Randolph is next. You're in tune to Talk Back Live with Bob and Josh. Seven thirty. Yahoo Sports. That was uh, Zach Randolph on yeah. part of his interview there uh, last night at the FedEx Forum after the game. And, and yeah, I want to ask Philip. I know you were there mm-hmm. um, talking to him. What was the feel in the locker room really after a game? I know it couldn't have been that great after a sweep, but what was it like? Um, there was a lot of disappointment, but they realized as soon as they saw that standing ovation from the fans that like we've done something really important here in this city that and they feel like they can do something else. You know, Zach, Tony said last night, a lot of the uh, media was asking Tony last night uh, about his free agent stats, and then he just immediately just said, I bleed blue. Mm. And they were asking Zach uh, about his future, and he just said, I want to retire Grizz- I want to retire as a Grizzly, and I want to bring a championship here. And I think mm. that's, that's made a lot of people here in the city very comfortable right now. All right, and Peter Lancaster, WVTM TV, Birmingham, Alabama. Peter, uh, before you leave today, uh, talk about Zach Randolph, him wanting to bring a championship to the city. Uh, some people are saying uh, he's too old. Uh, should they get rid of him? Is he too old? What do you think? Well, look how far we've come in, in a three- to four-year period. There are players, good players, like Zach Randolph and Tony Allen, that want to retire as a Grizzly. Mm-hmm. I mean, does that not speak volumes of where we where we were four or five years ago to where we are now? Mm-hmm. And the other thing too about Zach, let's not forget how dominant he was in those first two series. Okay, yeah. so it's not like Zach like got worse. It's just yeah. it, the scheme hey. worked against him with mm-hmm. the matchups we had against the Spurs. So yeah. going into you know, this off season, everybody just needs to calm down. Stop overreacting. Debo mm-hmm. and Mark have a connection, okay? They got chemistry there. We th- th- there's no there's nothing we can trade Zebo for in the free agent market mm-hmm. and, and what's available that's gonna match what Zebo brings to this team. Okay, yeah. Philip, okay. Uh, Philip got, go ahead, Philip. Yeah. Uh, people were asking about t- uh, Zach Randolph's age, and he just me said, look at Tim Duncan. He's 37, 38 years old right now, and he's playing a lot better than some of these young power forwards right now. And he mm-hmm. went up and told Tim Duncan after the game, I'm really proud of you the way you've played this season, and you motivate me. Mm-hmm. And he wants, to, and he knows that at that age, he wants to play as well as Tim right now. Yeah. Well, so he, 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 age, you, doesn't, you got, age, age doesn't factor him. You, okay, Tim Duncan. You think he's got what Tim, Tim Duncan had at this age? You think he can do this? You know, it, 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 it's interesting because you look at the style of play Tim Duncan doesn't rely on athleticism mm-hmm. or anything like that. It's really similar with Zach, the same thing. So it, it really doesn't have anything to do with losing any athleticism. You still have no. the skill. Mm-hmm. You know, he should still be able to do it really for a long time. Yeah. All right, my friend Peter Lancaster. Hey, it's always a pleasure to have you join us, my friend. WVTM TV, Birmingham, Alabama. Peter, thanks, man. Uh, thank you, guys. All right. Yes, sir.